Ooh. Long day yesterday, followed by a short day today. I think probably about a maximum of two hours and one short tunnel. Hopefully the tunnel will be uneventful. Came up the entire flight at Hatton Locks yesterday. Didn't see another boat. And I think there's been, I think that's the fifth or sixth one that's gone down or, you know, going ready to go down today. So I think we had a, a really lucky day there. We did the whole lot in six hours. That was pretty good. Uh, I've no idea when this one here moored. Look at this. He's moored on the same ring as us. It wasn't there yesterday. So that's good going. I like it when people are really uh, um, sort of unnoticeable. But uh, quick run today. Back to Sheffield tonight. So this is going to be one of those really short videos. Might do a time lapse just to make it a little bit more interesting for you, but uh, it's not going to be not going to be a biggie today. But it is another beautiful day. We're in the shade at the moment, but I suspect as soon as we leave this lovely little shaded glade, we will be in the bright, sunny, shiny again. Um, and because Charlotte's got to do some work today, you know, like not at the office on the boat, as it were. We might get a signal. We shall see. Oh, I feel really guilty because I'm going to have to smash that web up in a minute. I'm sorry. That's such a lovely job you're doing on there as well. Wow, we think we're an amazing species because we can do things like build roads and bridges and coal-fired power stations but look at the absolute it's just the perfection of that another tunnel I think this is only about 400 yards long, something like that. And we can see right through to Toveren. So we know pretty much there's an outcoming Tover way yet. Probably about 30 seconds after getting into the tunnel. There'll be a broad beam coming. I doubt it actually. And we have the tunnel mistress here. You can. I shall get some creative artistic artistic footage. Yes. Artistic footage coming up, boys and girls. Yeah, that's quite artistic. Definitely artistic with that uh, that mist there, but I think that's amazing. That I like that.
here we are leaving Shrewley Tunnel that were lovely that were Bit wet, Skipper. Yeah, that was a very leaky tunnel. Can't beat a wet woman. <laughs> Little restoration project for someone. A bow and botte. Two for the price of one. Make that into a day boat. Be lovely. So, not far to go now, and we'll be mooring up. That'll be it for the day. That's uh, it's a fairly short day, but today is a work day. School day, as it were. Before heading back to Sheffield tonight, for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then back to pick the boat up Friday evening. I'm running a swearing workshop. No, I fuck you not. I am running a swearing workshop. I, um, as many of you will know, I'm fairly fond of certain words which Americans of a certain persuasion rule class as being a potty mouth. I believe there is a huge therapeutic advantage to be gained from deploying a liberal amount of profanity. And especially when I'm on the boat, I like to really kind of like regress to when I was a teenager. Probably a little bit earlier than that. And one of the things that one of my uncles said, my uncle Walter, Walter Shelley his name was, lived in Strood in Kent. 10 Northcote Road, right opposite a beautiful park. And uh, Uncle Walter, or Wally, as everyone used to call him, he gave me a wonderful piece of advice when I was about seven or eight years old. Now, he, Uncle Wally was a, a, you know, one of those post war, moved out of the East End types, Kentish lad. Still very, very much a, a bit of a, a bit of a cockney. He says, he says, you want a bit of advice, boy? He says, you ever want to get on in life? He says, don't fucking talk like I do. And it was only years later I realised what he meant. And then he said, uh, you, you listen to the wireless, sir. You go and listen to the wireless. And you listen to how them people on the BBC talk. He says, you want to get on in life? You listen to them. And, uh, and I did. I started listening to received pronunciation and did all that sort of like what you would these days call your sort of like your channel f sort of radio four. Um, not so much now. Um, but if you look at any of the 1960s newsreels or whatever, <clears throat> that's how I learnt to speak. I was the first person in my family ever to go to grammar school. I didn't like and then I was the first person in my family ever to go to university university I think I was the first person in my family ever to get a degree or a doctorate and a lot of those doors were opened for me by the way I speak and that's true for many of the people that I work with these days so the swearing workshop I'm about to lead is about 
using <coughs> certain profanities, and I use them all very, very freely, but using them as a means of expressing beyond our usual vocabulary and releasing of emotion in a way that we very rarely afforded the opportunity to do. And for those who work in the health service, there's something very, very freeing and liberating about calling your manager a fuckwit. Not necessarily to their face unless you or they are leaving the department, but <laughs> very liberating all the same. So over the last couple of years, I've been encouraging people, and it sounds bizarre, I've been encouraging people to swear more. Not necessarily to patients or in public or whatever, but release some of that pent up frustration in a remarkable deployment of the word fuck. And it's, uh, it's really therapeutic. Oh, actually, it's something that I used to do with patients when I ran the terminal illness support group uh, in you know up until probably about 2015 when it was really really a busy group we would have sessions where we say it's all right to scream and shout and say it's not fair because it's not fucking fair and those sessions were, were the most popular ones I think we've we've ever run um, so yes so when we get back to Sheffield this is a little bit of padding because it's going to be a short video hope you enjoyed the tunnel I'm doing a time lapse of this whole trip. That will go up as a separate video. But uh, just to say, what, what am I going to do when I go back to Sheffield? I'm going to run a swearing workshop on Zoom, by the way. I could run it from the boat, but uh, I'm going to run it from the boathouse. And, um, and then back here Friday. Anyway, enough, enough waffle on. Let's, uh, let's gently plod on up to junction. That's what I call a view. Now that, that is why I'm proud of England. Not because of 11 overpaid blokes kicking a bag of wind around a fucking field for 90 minutes. This, this is England. And for the record, Scotland and Wales are just as pretty. Kingswood Junction. And this is where we turn off to go down to the Stratford Canal, because we're going to make a little change to our journey. We were going to go straight up Grand Union here, which is a broad canal. Uh, be quite good fun to go down. And we are currently moored, although not staying there, underneath a railway bridge. Oops. There we are. That's what's there underneath railway bridge. Now, the plan, such as it is, Molly, over there, is to do a quick detour and then do the Worcester and Birmingham Canal. And that way, we should be able to moor almost right outside Attic Brewery. So this is where a lot of the things on this channel actually then become mixed. Molly! <laughs> Molly, come here, there's not food for you. 
um, as we do that sort of stunning thing of, oh look, private property, but it's got a wishing well. Isn't that nice? Of mixing some of the themes of this channel. And the main theme we're gonna be mixing on this journey is uh, making it up as we go. <sighs> Detouring whenever we want to. <laughs> and um, <laughs> trying to fit a brewery in. I don't think that's too bad, do you? Right, anyway, I think probably for today, um, this is the uh, end of the vlog. Whatever you're doing, do it safely. Make a wish. Click that, ring that, and all that. Cheers, guys. You take care now.